Okay, our next lightning talk will be given by E.L. de Klerk and Martin Kaiser, uh, and it's about CODI, the home entertainment system. Right. Um, well, the guy in front of us was uh, nice to stop a little bit early, so we have uh, just a few more minutes, which is necessary because the talk um, we're giving was yesterday given in 35 minutes, and I had to skip a lot. So I have to talk about twice as fast. I just, I just did a demo of the speed I'm going to do the slides at. So, you know. Um, I think most of you will have heard of uh, Kodi. We're an open source home entertainment center software. And we were formerly known as XBMC. Um, due to legal reasons, we've had to change our name. I'll explain a little bit more about that later. Um, our names, um, this is Martijn Kaiser. He was the release manager for version 14 and will probably be the release manager for version 15 because he said so yesterday. So that makes him the release manager, I guess. Um, my name is Eole Klerk. Uh, I don't use my same name on the forum. I am Kip on the forum and I do server infrastructure. So I'm actually not a developer. Um, what is Kodi? We are a award-winning software media player and entertainment hub. Um, as I said yesterday, for the people who were there, we are award-winning because we won the SourceForge Award for Best Game. <laughs> uh, which I, I actually realized yesterday after the talk, I currently have in my house, and I should have brought. Um, because we use it as a sort of, um, um, how do you say that? The prize for the best it's every developer conference, we give it to the person on the team who's had the most bad luck. It's like a, a bad luck trophy. <laughs> it's such a weird thing to have. Um, we are world, the world's largest open source multimedia project, uh, GPL v2, and blah, 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 something. Uh, we run on every platform and FreeBSD. Um, <laughs> uh, I checked yesterday, we have 500 users. So I, I, I said it wrong yesterday. We have 500 users on FreeBSD. Um, later on, you will see that we have a little bit more on the other platforms. Um, what makes us different from uh, the, the, the cone thing, um, VLC, uh, and, uh, and the Windows Media Player? Um, we use a unified interface to view pictures, video, music, live TV, um, if you have it. Um, we we're the first to have a 10-foot interface for couch viewing, uh, fully skinnable uh, GUI, so you can make your own skins. It's quite a lot of work, but you can still do. We use almost the same, same code base on all platforms, and we have an extensible add-on system, which is pretty cool, 1,000 add-ons in our repo, several hundred outside of the repo that do s various piracy-related stuff that we don't want to be associated with. Very popular, though. Um, <laughs> Never used it myself, though. Um, and we have a JSON RPC interface um, for almost total control. Very soon it will probably be total control because we're working on making a headless version of the application. Um, I'm going to skip the, the distributions. I'm going to skip the demo because we don't have demo hardware. You can come to the building in a W building. We have a stand and we can demonstrate the software there if you've never heard of Kodi. Um, recommended hardware, also come to the AW building. Um, I'm going to skip the hardware we would avoid, the hardware we would suggest. You can quickly scan over it. Um, I will go to the where did we go. I see something went wrong with the picture here. Well, um, where did XBMC go? Why did we change our name? People were using our name to sell boxes. Mainly Chinese people were doing this. Selling boxes with piracy video add-ons pre-installed on them, selling them as XBMC. Buy this XBMC box. XBMC allows you to stream piracy. That's what it was made for. No, that's not what it was made for. We don't want to be associated with that. Um, there were several groups claiming that they were us. Um, we had applied for a trademark, um, but we didn't really research that very well on how that process went because no experience. Um, uh, we did that too late. We should have done that when we started, when XBMC name was made. Should have immediately owned the, the name, which we didn't. 
Um, and when we did apply for it, uh, there was a company that had a very similar name and they basically said, well, we are legally required to protect our name because otherwise we lose our trademark. So you can't register this, it's way too close to what we have. And we said, yeah, yeah, that, that, that actually does make sense, yeah. Um, so what now? And they were actually quite nice they, from a legal perspective. They didn't say shut down your website, close your uh, software, uh, take everything offline and never use the name again and never be spoken of again. They said, we'll make a nice agreement. You get more than a year the time to change the name. You can keep the old domain names. You can do whatever you want. But f after this year is over, there should be a new version of the software released and it should have a new name. So that's basically the story. Um, we get some uh, people who think that we're going commercial because we changed our name. Oh, you changed your name, you're going commercial. We're not going commercial. Um, it's still GPL2. So. Um, quick history, uh, 2001 Xbox. Why? It was cheap. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I, if it, this is a 40, 50 minute presentation. I'm going. Um, it was easy, it was cheap, it was easy to hack. It was the cheapest hardware that could do video playback. B basic reason for people to buy it. Um, that was the reason why uh, XBMC started. Um, XBMC, everything is crushed a little bit. Well, um, developed in C++, structured around a game loop uh, in some parts of the code that is still existing. Um, originally, the game loop was because on the Xbox it was needed to do it that way. Uh, so you have one loop of code that, that runs around. Um, very recently, uh, a new guy out of nowhere came and said, hey, I, uh, I decided that this should be removed, so here's a pull request that almost does that. And then he was added to our team uh, immediately. <laughs> so a lot of people were, man, you have balls to do that, because <laughs> this is gonna break stuff. But um, Just some more information on our, on our course and stuff. Um, we rely on a, on a lot of other open source libraries and projects, of course. Uh, this is a little indication of some of the stuff that we use. Most notably our uh, FFmpeg, which is our main engine for playback, and Python, which is the main engine for all the add-ons that we uh, develop and run, except for the binary ones, which we are now also doing, yes. Um, between 2003 and 2007, X XBMC was a, a quite a big success on Xbox. Uh, openness, community, uh, many scripters and skinners were joining. Um, the Xboxes were becoming cheaper, the hard drives were becoming ch uh, cheaper, and streaming was added. Um, then, up until 2008, so 2007, 2008, we started porting to other platforms for the first time. We got uh, Windows, um, OS X, Linux. Between 2008 and 2009, um, we, as a, as a project, we ran into some issues. Um, there were a lot of ports, development team grew, community grew. Um, we were getting donations to, to have meetups and to go to conferences like this one. Um, but the donations went into a personal PayPal account. Um, what happens when the guy dies or leaves or takes the money or whatever? Um, what happens if the key developer leaves? Uh, how do you handle this? Um, there's a company that wants to sponsor us, to sponsor a person. Uh, we're not a company. So we had to become a company, so the foundation was born. It's a US nonprofit uh, foundation, um, initially sponsored by our uh, sponsor, Boxy, because they were doing a commercial port, um, which cost a lot of money and a lot of time to set up. Uh, recently, when we did the name change, we had a lot of money and a lot of time to change. Um, I'm going to skip a little bit. What did we fail on as, a, as an open source project? What did we fail on? Um, dual licensing. We, we, didn't, we can't dual license the software because it requires us to contact every single developer that's ever contributed to the code and get their permission. A bit of a problem. Um, we didn't own our brand. Um, we didn't have a backend server from the start. It's been requ requested all the time. It's now actually uh, going to be done. Um, we still have problems with communication. Having a hundred people, like core people, and 
several hundred other people from all over the world with different languages and getting all their heads aligned the same way is really difficult. Um, the yearly team developer conference that we have actually is the best tool for that. Get everybody in the same room for a few days and discuss stuff when they're looking at each other instead of typing text on the forums. Doesn't work very well. Um, and we still get people that say we're not very user friendly and we recognize that some parts of our GUI are not user friendly. It's just not very easy to completely rebuild it. Um, steps are being made to make the entire application more user friendly, slowly going, slow. Um, quick, quick data, I'm just gonna skip through this really quick. Um, 83 team members, I think we're around 100, but not everybody's active. Lines of code went down from about 11 million to 6 million. Uh, 6 million lines of code, if you use the Kokomo model, cost about $100 million to create. Uh, recently, a developer said, I can make this faster by removing 10,000 lines of code, but that means our project will become $60,000 less worth. <laughs> yeah. he, he was, of course, joking. Um, Languages it's written in, it's uh, mainly C and C++ and 36 others. But that's, uh, well, Python for the add-ons, XML for the skins and, and skinning stuff. Um, the main part of the code is written in C++. This also includes the, the build tools and everything like that. Um, skipping. Skipping the development cycle skipping the version and the country and going to platform. This is always something people want to know. Um, you can see 2.3 million on Windows, 2.1 million on Android, 1.2 million people on Linux. And then at the bottom, we have these 600 people that use FreeBSD. <laughs> um, so interestingly enough, we have one team member who does FreeBSD and we have one team member who does Android. So we have one Android developer. All Android specific fixes are done by one person. If you know how to do Android specific fixes, if you know Android developers, or any other developers for that matter, but specifically Android, OS X, and iOS, where we, those are all quite big and we have only one person for them. If you know people, send them our way or come our way, please. Android, yes, single main developer. Uh, he's actually here, if you want to talk to him, he's at the AEW building later on. Um, I just got a side that I have five minutes left, which is good because this thing is gonna go off in two minutes. So I'm gonna change that to five, otherwise I go mad. Um, Android is the faster, fastest growing user base. There are so many Android boxes, they're becoming cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and they can all run Kodi fairly well except for a few types. Um, it's becoming really easy. We're running uh, on an Amazon Fire TV stick at the moment in the demonstration. It's like that big and it runs, runs it very well, much better than a Raspberry Pi. Uh, better, faster GUI. The problem with Android is that uh, the feature sets are a bit inconsistent. Not all devices do audio pass-through, not all devices have hardware decoding, so you have to do a little bit of, of finding out what to buy. Raspberry Pi, very many people use it. Um, Open ALEC is one of the most well-known distributions that run Kodi. Um, it's a minimal Linux distribution that instantly boots to Open ALEC, uh, to, uh, to Kodi in about, I don't know, five seconds, something like yeah. that. Um, I'm skipping a few of the commercial ports and talking about future things. What do we want to do in the future? Uh, we have the following things planned at the moment. We are working on binary add-ons. Um, currently, we have some binary add-ons, but they are written by us. Uh, this is talking about um, PVR add-ons, which are binary. We have some audio encoders, audio decoders, uh, screen savers, I guess. Yep. Um, that's it? Do we yep. have any more? That's it, right, right, that's it. So currently, those are, those are binary. They're written in C and compiled. We compile them ourselves and then provide them as a zip file. And we can also do updates that way, which we don't, but we could. Um, Structure is in place, we're just not using it. Why not? I don't know. Um, what we want to do is we want to have the possibility for external, so third-party add-ons, where people submit C++ code 
and we compile it and put it in our repository. Or they compile it. Well, then it's, it's a bit difficult if it can go in our repository because then we don't know what's inside. And if what's inside is legal because otherwise we don't want to have it in our repository. So that's a bit difficult, I think. Um, we are still searching on the correct way to do that, but it will be there and the structure is being put in place. Um, media importing, uh, content integration, you probably read it uh, uh, at already. And some other stuff that's happening, uh, retro player, the possibility to play back uh, old ROMs for old gaming directly in uh, a playback engine in Kodi. Uh, it testing versions works really, really well. Um, you put your ROMs in a folder, you name them, uh, they get scraped, you get metadata on your ROMs. You play the ROM like you play a video. It starts playing the video game. You can play, I don't know, Mario, and then Mario falls and dies, and you, you rewind Mario So because it's a video stream, so you rewind him, and then you jump again, and you don't miss it. It's really fun. Um, it's not completely finished. The idea is when it's finished, it goes in and we release a new version. It's, it's just also being developed by one single person who is finishing his studies. He's he, finished his he, he has finished his studies. He's out working on his idea. Oh, he's working, he's working again on it. Yeah. Oh, so uh, apparently he's working on it again. There was, a, there was a few months of nothing happening there, but um, one of the biggest things that we're doing at the moment, uh, decided like this DEFCON that it really should be done, is to have a headless version. Uh, where you can run Kodi without a GUI, use it on a central box, do your scraping and everything there, and in the future connect other Kodi clients through UPnP to it, so you don't have to set up MySQL or do all that crap, you just run it on your Synology NAS or whatever, do the scraping there, control it through a web interface. So many things that are needed to be able to do that are done. Um, I think Jason RPC can already set up all the settings. Oh. JSON RPC cannot set all the settings, most of them, but also, although you can do it through JSON RPC, it's not implemented in the web interface. So we don't have the web interface yet, but it's all getting together. There's many things that need to change for that, and many are already changed. Um, so I hope this year maybe we'll be able to do that. It's always so hard to say. Um, latest thing, and then I have to end. Um, is the audio DSP processing add-ons. That's an example of binary add-ons, which somebody already wrote, uh, hooks into the audio engine, and you basically get like room correction and stuff like that, uh, make the center channel uh, uh, take certain values, put processing over it. Um, and that is the end. Um, we need developers, we need developers, we need developers. Okay, if there are any questions, I advise you to just come to the front and ask them afterwards because we're short on time. Um, also make sure, like there are a lot of people here, make sure that everyone can sit. So if there is like a chair over, just scoot over. Don't leave chairs open if people are sitting on the chairs. On the stairs. Yeah. Um, it's, uh,